With the latest chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen 204 leading us into a break this week, I figured it'd be a good time to recap everything that's happened in the Cullen games to keep your beautiful brains fresh and full of Jujutsu lore. But before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Love ya. So the Cullen games has announced them with Kenjaku being the perpetrator, and these are the rules. Pause to read them, I ain't doing all the work for you. Yuji, Megami, Panda, and Hakari all enter the colonies to fight within the Cullen games. As Megami and Yuji enter the barrier, we see them drop from a great height, and it's confirmed that this is an unspoken rule to space out players at random points in the Cullen games. Upon falling, Yuji is immediately attacked by a sorcerer called Hanyu, with the intention being to pick off any sorcerers caught unawares by falling into the games. Yuji makes short work of Hanyu and counters by literally throwing a rock charge with cursed energy, defeating her only to be greeted by her partner Haba. Megami also finds himself in a similar situation, fighting with a sorcerer named Remy off drop. Megami makes light work of the sorcerer and tells her to take him to Higuruma. Yuji continues to fight with Haba and lands a direct hit, stunning him and then finishing him off with a swift kick. We then see Yuji and Megami are being missed led by the two sorcerers they've met, but it's not made clear who's telling the truth and who isn't. It turns out Megami was fooled and Higuruma was not where Remy had said he was. We're shown Yuji meeting with Higuruma, who is just chilling in a bathtub on stage, fully clothed, which in my opinion is the true crime here. Yuji asks if they can use his 100 points to add the rule to the game and Higuruma says no. Higuruma and Yuji then get ready to fight it out. Higuruma almost instantly uses his domain expansion, a domain that revolves around the process of a courtroom trial. Yuji fails the first set of questions and Judgeman takes away his ability to control K energy. While Yuji is slowly getting beaten down, he realises he can call for a retrial which instantly teleports them both into the domain. Judgeman then accuses Yuji of mass murder in Shibuya, to which Yuji admits and says he is guilty of. Judgeman then declaring that the death sentence is needed for Yuji. Higuruma, feeling sad for Yuji, releases his curse techniques and then offers to give the 100 points to him that he needs. Cutting back to Megami, who's having to fight a 3-on-1 fight against sorcerers named Registar, Hazanoki Iori, and Chizuru Hari. Megami is then ambushed by Chizuru and kills him almost immediately, gaining 5 points, leaving it in a 2 on 1 fight, Megami vs Reggie and Hazanoki. Just as Hazanoki fires his technique at Megami, none other than Fumihiko Takaba joins the fray. Takaba tries to lighten the mood with a nice little joke, only to have no one laugh at his joke, but then he drop kicks Hazanoki. Takaba proceeds to beat the ever-loving sh** out of Hazanoki, even hitting him with a cold poke up the ass. Takaba and Megami split up to take on their respective opponents and Megami finally decides to get serious. Megami begins to fight with Reggie who reveals his technique and recreates a contract from old receipts. He then shows a receipt from a spa that he uses basically as a phoenix down to essentially fully heal himself against a fatigued Megami. Megami decides that the best course of action here is to make like Mahito and run away and lures Reggie to an empty gym and then activates his domain expansion. Reggie counters with his own technique hollow wicker basket and proceeds to try and use Megami's own domain against him only to find out Megami then drops his Max Elephant right on top of him. Managing to escape from under the weight of Max Elephant, Reggie then proceeds to drop a house on top of Megami using one of the receipts. Megami using quick thinking grabs Reggie and drags him into the water of the pool that was in the gymnasium, using the weight that Reggie had put on top of him to his advantage to drag them both under the water. Megami and Reggie continue fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat, having exhausted each other's cursed energy. While the fight ensues, Reggie banks on Megami stepping away to summon a Shikigami and use that as his opener to finish the fight. But Reggie completely forgot that Divine Dog was actually still active this entire time and instead loses the fight. We then cut back to Takaba and Hazanoki as the two burst onto a rooftop while still fighting. Kogane appears and informs Hazanoki of Reggie's death and then all of a sudden Hazanoki has no desire to continue fighting. We are then given an absolutely massive bombshell about Takaba and his curse technique. Turns out Takaba's curse technique is the comedian, meaning that whatever he finds funny can be made a reality and this is a power that can rival even Gojo Satoru. We then cut back to Megami's divine dog standing over Remy and is seemingly about to kill her and as Megami has a flash of his sister telling him no, he dispels Divine Dog and collapses from exhaustion, only to have none other than Hana Karusu herself floating above Megami. We're then introduced to some of the other players inside of the Cullen games, Druv, Lakdawala, Ryu, Ishiguri, Takako, Uro, and a cursed spirit that Kenjaku had freed called Kuroroshi. We learn that these players are all in a stalemate and that is until Okotsu had killed Druv. As it turns out, three months after the night parade of 100 demons, Kotsu came back to become a special grade sorcerer, second only to Gojo Satoru in unusual abilities. Kotsu comes face to face with Kuroroshi and the two prepare to fight while Akotsu swears he will be the one to kill Kenjaku. Akotsu fights with Kuroroshi and just as all seems defeated, Akotsu literally bites its foot face, spitting cursed energy into it, eviscerating Kuroroshi. Just as Okotsu is recovering, Takako appears next to him and whispers dirty things in his ear and the two begin to fight. Takako reveals her technique and use the very sky as a surface that she can grab and use however she pleases. Kotsu and Takako have a small conversation before being interrupted by Ryu who uses Granite Blast. All three players then decide it's time for a freeway. 
wait. Kotsu then closes the distance on Ryu and the two begin to fight. Ryu fires another granite blast at Akatsu with him deflecting it with his bare hands. Takako interferes by slapping Akotsu to the ground with her technique. Ryu turns around to call her a pile of vomit only for Takako to return fire by calling him a dickhead. A truly wonderful exchange of words. Kotsu finally gets serious by calling on Rika to help fight against the two powerhouses before him. Rika then appears to Akotsu and offers him a weapon to choose from. We then get some explanation of Akotsu's technique, Rika. While connected to Rika through this ring, the following is possible. Curse technique use, Rika's complete and utter manifestation, cursed energy supply from Rika, and he can maintain this curse technique for up to five minutes. Kotsu opens up by using cursed speech on Takago while Rika fights with Ryu. As the battle heats up, all three decide to use their domain expansions. Kuroroshi finally rejoins the battle after a quick regeneration nap, and as all three domains go off with the same amount of cursed energy, causes all three to crumble. While they are all fallen, Kotsu makes use of the opening to kick Takako towards Kuroroshi and she loses her arm to it. Ryu also sees the opening and uses his granite blast on Takako and Kuroroshi, killing Takako and decimating Kuroroshi. Kotsu lands the final blow on Kuroroshi and all that is left now is the final two, Akotsu and Ryu. Kotsu and Ryu fire granite blasts at each other, both enjoying their fight to the maximum. In one final flurry of attacks, Kotsu declares himself the winner as the granite blast from Ryu that Akotsu had redirected lands on top of him. We then cut to Hakar who was riding a ferris wheel with a fighter in the Cullen Games named Bernard, who's an aspiring mangaka and he mentions he doesn't have a reason to fight in the Cullen Games and wants Hakari to say something mean to him so that will make him want to fight. So naturally Hakari obliges and tells him that he would never read his manga even if he begged him to. Bernard gets worked up by this and the two begin to fight. Hakari ends up being marked by Bernard's technique which allows Bernard to see one second into the future but Hakari picks up the speed and attacks faster than Bernard can react to. Hakari wastes no time in activating his dome in expansion which is called Idle Death Gamble and is based on pachinko machines. The domain allows Hakari to manipulate probability, allowing him to hit jackpots, affording him unlimited cursed energy for 4 minutes and 11 seconds. Both Bernard and Hakari continue to fight with Bernard landing a significant blow onto Hakari. It's then revealed that Hakari hits a triple three in matching symbols, affording him a jackpot and is able to counter against Bernard. Cutting over to Panda, who's also in the colony right now, we see him running into Hajime Kashimo, a sorcerer from over 400 years ago who then consults with Kogan to find out whether Panda is a real player or not. Kogain confirms that Panda is in fact a player and Kashimo wastes no time in attacking Panda. In a short but brutal fight, Kashimo utterly destroys Panda and then asks where Sukuna is, only for none other than Hakari to join the fray after his fight with Bernard. Hakari wastes no time in punching Kashimo through metal containers. We then get to see this insane panel of Hakari overflowing with cursed energy and effect from his previous domain when fighting Bernard. Hakari had hit a jackpot so for 4 minutes and 11 seconds, Akari has unlimited cursed energy and can also use reverse curse technique to heal himself almost instantly from any wounds inflicted, essentially making him unstoppable and unkillable for those 4 minutes and 11 seconds. What makes this even more impressive is after those 4 minutes and 11 seconds, Akari can open up another domain expansion again, so long as Akari has hit a jackpot every time. The two continue to fight and Akari hits a jackpot once again. Kashimo says he may be unkillable, but I'll kill him anyway. We then get this flashback between Kashimo and Kanjaku where Kashimo is looking with a strongest sorcerer around and Kanjaku tells Kashimo that it's Sukuna who is the strongest he knows of. This will be where Kanjaku and Kashimo made their contract for Kashimo to be resurrected into the Cullen game so we can fight Sukuna in the modern ages. Cutting back to the fight we get to see the two thoroughly enjoying their time literally playing ping pong with a shipping container like it is nothing. Kashimo lands a heavy blow onto Hakari eviscerating half of his face. Kashimo shoots electricity into the head of Hakari intending to end the fight by destroying his head. Instead Hakari heals his face and forcibly pushes out the electricity out of his nose. As it turns out, Kashimo had been storing electrical rods throughout the shipping yard and called the electricity back to him through his chosen route, which Akari happens to be stood in front of. The blow lands and Akari is left with a massive hole in his side, but it didn't matter because Akari could still use his domain again, having hit a jackpot in the previous one. Hakari shifted the coordinates of his domain so when it opened up again, they'd be over water. Kashimo's weakness, since his cursed energy has the special attribute of electricity. As Akari is watching from afar, he starts to feel faint due to Kashimo using electrolysis to create fluorine gases to knock out Akari. We learn that even someone with reverse curse technique can be killed by either toxins or destroying the brain in one fell swoop. Akari manages to target the toxins in his body individually and the two throw one final blow at each other with Kashimo discharging all of his curse energy and causing a massive explosion. Kashimo climbs out of the water and we see a mini panda watching onward. Having used all of his cursed energy to attack Akari, it turns out Akari survived due to 
him making a last minute binding vow to sacrifice his arm to protect the rest of his body. We learn that Kashimo never once used his technique throughout the fight and is saving it for Sukuna himself. Coming back to Bernard who is actually alive and well, we then see Nishima arriving to let Hikari know that Maki can pass through the barriers, referring to her as a monster. We then see this panel of Maki looking incredibly sinister. We cut to Maki and Noritoshi Kamo when we see an incredibly powerful cursed spirit appearing in the sky. We then get a flashback from Noritoshi that reveals that none other than Kenjaku has taken over the Kamo clan as its 25th head. Cutting back to the present day, we see Maki and Noritoshi looking at the cursed spirit as it dives down to attack. The cursed spirit moves so fast that Noritoshi couldn't even see what happened. Turns out the cursed spirit is none other than Naoya Zenin, who reveals to Maki that it was her own mother had killed him. Maki and Naoya begin to fight and Naoya starts to transform into a cursed womb. Noritoshi uses piercing blood finished before the transformation can be completed. The attack doesn't work and Naoya completes his transformation and wastes no time in attacking Noritoshi, who survives the punch but notes that if he hadn't blocked it in time, he would have lost his head and his arm. Noritoshi and Maki begin to fight with the newly transformed Naoya and learn that although Naoya is now a cursed spirit, he still is able to use his cursed technique from when he was human. Naoya backs up to gain speed in order to hit Maki with an attack that reaches Mark 3, sending her across the city. Noritoshi joins up with Maki and asks for 5 minutes so she can heal herself, while Noritoshi holds off Naoya. Noritoshi and Naoya begin to fight and as things are starting to look bad for Noritoshi, two random sorcerers show up screaming the word sumo and katana. We learn that the guy screaming for a katana is a Cullen game player by the name of Daido Hagane, and the other guy that's screaming about sumo is also a player in the Cullen games by the name of Miyu Rokujishi. They both want one thing each a katana, and for someone to sumo with. Maki's sword all of a sudden flies into the hand of Daido who is screaming for a katana. Everyone on the battlefield stops in the tracks and is terrified at the presence of this man holding the katana for one reason. It was his sheer lethality with that blade in his hand. Daido seemingly speaks to the blade after it lands in his hand stating the katana chooses its wielder and then is attacked by Naoya. We next learn that because of Daido having no cursed energy he can't actually see Naoya but instead can see everything around Naoya and is still able to cut him. Maki then questions what is actually the difference between herself and Toji Zenin. All of a sudden, she is pulled into a simple domain to sumo with Mio. Maki agrees to the sumo bow and the domain closes on the pair. Maki and Mio end up having a sumo match while also Mio is teaching her where she is going wrong. Almost like a therapy session in a way. The simple domain breaks and we see Maki pro proclaiming herself to be at her best. Mio's domain is explained to us and it's basically a miniature version of the hyperbolic time chamber and in the time it took for 1000 and bounce of sumo, the domain lasted only a mere minute in the outside world. We then get this panel of Naoya getting angry because he is unable to catch Maki even when he is so much faster. Then we see Maki seeing the air around her in a different way. We see her talking about the difference in air density and temperature and all she needed to do was seize them. Maki seemingly grabs the air to redirect herself and land a clean hit on Naoya. Daido, Maki and Mio all land hits onto Naoya and he transforms one final time. The human body of Naoya comes out on the half of the previous body and activates his domain expansion. Mio and Daido get caught inside of the domain and are attacked on a cellular level. Suddenly, Maki stabs Naoya in the chest and it's revealed that because of Maki's heavenly restriction, the domain doesn't count Maki as a human, but rather a building with no cursed energy and Maki can freely come and go as she pleases. Maki then slices Naoya clean in half and wins the fight. It's then confirmed that Maki's Zenin is now a fully realized fighter on par with Toji Zenin. Cutting back to Megami, we see him wake up in a hotel room with Yuji, Hanakurusu and Takaba all there. Megami and the gang have accumulated enough points to help with his sister and then they ask Hanakurusu if she knows about a player by the name of Angel, only to have a mouth appear on the side of Hana's face answer them that she is in fact Angel. Angel says that she will help with the unsealing of Gojo in return for a favor and that favor is the killing of a player known as the Disgraced One. Saguna then reveals to Yuji that he is in fact the disgraced one that Angel wants to kill. Yuji signals to Megami by way of interpretive dance that Sukuna inside of him is in fact a disgraced one and we learn that over 807 people have entered the colony in the Cullen games all of a sudden. We then cut to February 2018 where we see Kenjaku meeting with world leaders to inform them of the Cullen games and the existence of cursed energy in hopes of the world leaders joining forces with him. We're then introduced to a man called Cyrus Vale who proclaims that cursed energy could replace all of their energy sources as the cleanest energy in history. We're introduced to a man 
named Gary K. Johnson, who's a lieutenant for the US military, in which Kenjaku is trying to convince to invade the Cullen Games in order to abduct Japanese sorcerers for experiments to harness their cursed energy. Gary is skeptical about how powerful cursed energy could be, and they decide to test it against the special ops Gary has outside of the Oval Office. The test goes ahead and Kajaku, as predicted, makes light work of the soldiers by dropping them from the sky in front of Gary. Gary runs outside of the White House only to see a massive cursed spirit that Kajaku had summoned that was sat atop the White House. Cutting back to Yuki Sukumo, who was having a conversation with Tengen where we learned Yuki was actually a former Star Plasma vessel who was supposed to have merged with Tengen at some point in the past. We then learn that Tengen is actually a granny, and Yuki definitely doesn't like her. We then see that Kenjaku has successfully invaded the tombs above the Star Corridor, only to come face to face with Choso, who stayed behind to guard Tengen with Yuki. The two talk about Kenjaku's plan, in which Kenjaku shows Choso what it may look like if everyone inside of Japan merged into one cursed spirit with Tengen. He then shows Choso this incredible behemoth cursed spirit looming over Japan. Choso eventually asks why Kenjaku wants to do all this and hurts so many innocent people, and Kenjaku replies with, he just finds it interesting. At which point, Choso becomes infuriated and fires a piercing blood at Kenjaku, and the two begin to fight. We then flash back to Choso, Yuki, and Tengen, covering the battle plan for when Kenjaku eventually arrives, with Choso stating that he'll be the first to fight Kenjaku in an effort to force him to use his domain expansion. Choso and Kenjaku continue to fight, with Kenjaku making light work out of Choso and dominating him. Kenjaku lands an attack on Choso, which seemingly puts Choso out for the count. We then see Choso thinking about his brothers, Yuji, Iso, and Kechizu, and asks for them to lend him their strength before getting up and returning to the fight with a renewed vigor. And that's your recap for everything that's happened in the Cullen Games so far. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe even consider becoming a member as it really does help me out. But that's all from me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Much love, big kisses, goodbye.